Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Sid Meier's Civilization VI in our Russian Sunrise series. This is episode 20. So as I've been saying for the last couple of episodes, we are going to take a hiatus with Russian Sunrise, as is normal on my channel. After this episode... Hey, what? Where do you need orders? Okay, here. Yeah. Just fortify. We're going to take a hiatus with Civilization uh, VI. Well, not with Civ VI, but with Russian Sunrise and uh, jump into another series for 20 episodes or so. And I'm interested in feedback as far as whether or not we should continue this one. I think we are headed very, very soundly towards a scientific victory with nothing to stop us. Uh, so I would just like to know your thoughts. The entire purpose of Russian Sunrise was to compare it to Russian Sunset, which is a series in Civilization V. So you can kind of see how the basic gameplay compared. Uh, for the past little while, I haven't been doing too much comparison to Five because I've just, frankly, been enjoying playing Civ, Civ Six, which I think a lot of us have been doing. So I've been going with the flow there. But uh, maybe it's time to start a proper series no innovation of. in the past 200 years has Hold done more thought. to save lives and improve health than the sanitation revolution, triggered by the invention of the toilet. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek quote, but at the same time, it's very true. Um, Oh, we can upgrade this bomber to artillery. Oh, it's beautiful. We have artillery now. Yeah, these these apostles are not healing. But India has not messed with us. Oh, what's going on here? Okay, we're going to need to convert. Oh, that's not our city. Never mind. Doesn't matter. So yes, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about whether or not... Oh yeah, definitely going to go to the research lab. Just thinking about whether or not we're going to continue this series um, with episode 21 uh, when it is time for it to come back, or if we want to do something else, maybe. Um, and I'm, I'm totally open to whatever your thoughts may be on that, so let me know. But anyway, let's jump back in for this episode. Novgorod. Let's, let's get a barracks built here, because that'll help with your production abilities. And then... Go ahead and go for a bank in Smolensk. <laughs> Decisions. Right. Got a lot of builders working hard over here. Tell you what, I'm going to go for this coal first, because there's only two charges left on this builder. We had a very, very nice <laughs> um, civic setup that was g giving all of our builders extra charges, and then it expired before I could use it. The expiration of, of civics is not something that I understand too much yet. Uh, I'll have to look into it. Maybe it's in the Civilopedia. Who knows? Oh, look, another barbarian encampment just popped up. That's convenient. Now I can pay these guys a visit with my ranger. Get him some experience. He's only getting one experience from each kill, which is unfortunate. And I really wish they would change that. I hate that it becomes so impossible to level up from barbarians after just an era or two. It's, it's very, very frustrating. So India has largely left us alone since we kind of got them to bugger off by attacking their units with ours. They have a Sumerian scout is all the way down here. Interesting. Great rider, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Fantastic. Wait, what? No. Choose production. Uh, that's right. I needed to build some more production related stuff here because there's so many mines. Oh, decisions. There's, there's a couple of good spots. Now let's build one. Let's build one here. It's going to take 17 turns, but that'll be a very productive place. See, I feel like sharpshooting this good should get this unit more, <laughs> more than one experience. But there's an argument to be made that maybe he's already just that good. He doesn't need more points. I don't know. It's just, it's off-putting a little bit that he can't do anything with that. So, F. Scott Fitzgerald does, of course, just like Jane Austen, uh, he does not have any spots where he could actually be used right now, so we're going to transfer him to... I'll put you in St. Petersburg. That's fine. And then this unit here... Alright. This is our new artillery unit that's just been promoted. Pretty soon we're going to have to... Oh, where did our gold income go? Oh. I thought Gilgamesh was giving us gold per turn. But he's not. Oh, I'm really confused now. Did I make a really stupid mistake at the end of one of the last episodes? Discuss. Uh... Just trying to 
That was just me experimenting. Um, uh, wow. All right, well, crap. I don't know how... I thought... See, I did a deal with Gilgamesh from to get my spy back, which resulted in a gold per turn coming from him. But he was giving me gold per turn due to a deal that he just made with me. So now I'm looking at this going, um, where's the gold per turn? I don't see it. I, I don't know... I don't know. There, there's something I, I didn't interpret correctly. We'll figure it out. It's possible that when it shows a certain amount on the screen and it says this amount for this many turns, it's not saying that amount every turn. It's saying that amount spread out over that many turns. That could have been what it was. And so I could have totally misinterpreted. But I don't think I did. I don't think that's the case. Hey, it's 1812. Here we go. <laughs> there's going to be a war somewhere. <laughs> Just not, not here. Because we are quite happily chugging along, becoming the most... Oh, whoa! Hey! Where did you come from? Sumeria is suddenly right behind us. Chemistry is the dirty part of physics. Interesting that Sumeria caught up so quickly. I wonder how, how that happened. Let's... Let's go ahead and research electricity so we get access to submarines and power plants. I don't know, we might have to fight Sumeria. I don't know if this series is going to end after 20 episodes. You guys have to let me know what you think, but now there's some last minute intrigue popping up. So yeah, let's go for the library in Kazan, because we definitely need to make sure that we continue to build up that capacity. Rio? Uh, no, nothing here. Just go for the, um, yeah, build a commercial hub district in Rio. That'll help with our gold issue. Not right away, but good night, but well enough for me. Solokomsk, build a water mill. One of our newer cities. Okay, so we've got that coal set up. And where might there be additional oil? Hmm, I don't see any in our territory. It says we already have one. We might have some offshore somewhere. I don't see any, though. We'll see. Alright, F. Scott Fitzgerald just needs to go to sleep because we don't have a spot for him right now. And then this ranger is going to stay on this continent just looking around as best he can. Now, 1814, soon to be, I guess, 1816 AD. I'm really unnerved about the fact that Gilgamesh just jumped ahead so far. Your trader, Dimitri, overheard that Sumeria has built a commercial hub in Adah. Yeah, so he is jockeying hard to overtake me in science. So this is going to come down to the wire, and I feel like Russian Sunrise is going to have to continue. But again, we'll, we'll see what you guys think. I'm liking the... Um, the intensity of it, the unexpected development. It's a good thing from an entertainment point of view. All right, let's go ahead and go for the archaeological museum. I also need to build some, um, yeah, see. So many options. I have a lot of archaeological sites around me. I'm going to go for that instead. And then let's go for... In Tula, I guess we need... Yeah, let's go ahead and start building a research lab somewhere. We need that boost. Definitely University in Lanchi. We need to keep ahead of our science gain here. Alright, we're going to use that builder's last charge on that farm. And I don't think there's anything else. Well, there's there's more. There's a lumber mill area up here that we can we can set up with that builder. So that's that's somewhat useful. But all right, you go there and build a mine. Okay, now this unit here. 
I can definitely spread religion with this unit, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's give Hinduism a little bit of a run for its money in a dab. Alright. This ranger just needs to get in the water as soon as possible. This caravel is just exploring the southern edges of the map here. So we've started to uncover the shape of this continent. It's got a nice long peninsula here, which, like I've said, is, I, I like when the continent shapes are a bit more unique and less blobbish, like this one that I started out on, which is quite nice. It's nice that there's a, a more irregular continent, I mean. All right, fairly soon I need to build my first... I'm several turns away from it, but I do need to build my first... Oh, hey, there's a barbarian encampment right there. Let's fix that problem. I need to build my first uh, archaeologists. Because I have several dig sites marked all over the map. You might see them. Some in my territory, some outside my territory. Spain is trading with France. Okay, so I guess they're not at war anymore. Your trader, Dimitri, overheard that Sumeria has used a war cart to clear our barbarian outpost. Okie doke. So let's go ahead and take care of these guys in one fell swoop. Which which should be all it takes. I hope. It's the industrial revolution and the growth of urban concentrations that led to a sense of anonymity. Nice. Give me your encampments. Thank you, gentlemen. That's that. Choose civic. Conservation. One copy of a strategic resource allows you to produce and purchase units requiring it in any city, as opposed to two. That's how that works. You can declare war of territorial expansion. So that would be handy against uh, Sumer. We can also make defensive packs. And here's Leve en masse. Unit maintenance uh, costs pre reduced by two gold per turn per unit. Now we're going to go for that, because we have a gold issue right now on account of my little silly derp with, uh, with Sumer. I don't know how that happened. I wasn't counting on that happening, but it did. So, yeah, let's go for the armory here in Novgorod, because we need the extra production. And now we have a trade route to set up. Let's have a look at our trade routes again. Kazan to Hong Kong, Tula to Uruk, Jian to Solka, uh, Solokovsk. I'll tell you what, let's let's trade with Adab. Yeah, let's go ahead and just trade with Adab, because that's going to give us additional gold. Enough to overcome our deficit, I think. Or maybe not. Improve that farmland right there. Nice! Adab is now Eastern Orthodox. That Apostle is now gone. And our caravel is going to keep moving east alongside the ice here. You just went through that ice. <laughs> yeah. Spain and France appear to have made peace. Yep. Philip II has made peace with Catherine de' Medici. Good for you. Now why can't I make that go away? Can't make it go away. Not sure why. Okay. Two turns away from the library in Kazan. Four turns away from the Archaeological Museum in St. Petersburg. It's 1818 AD. I would imagine we're going to have nuclear weapons by the end of this century. Possibly by early next century. Okay, actually on that note, yes, I have, hang on, first I have Jane Austen down here. Let's transfer her to Tula, and then next turn she can go there and create some of her work. Now this builder needs to come down here and build a lumber mill there. Now F. Scott Fitzgerald, you need to go to sleep because Jane Austen was ahead of you, sir. She was here first. All right, we can't scale that cliff, unfortunately. There is an antiquity site, though. And we'll go to the next turn. Or will we? <laughs> Sorry, I said we'll go to the next turn. I grabbed my drink. I took a big sip, expecting the game to just be cycling and me not to have anything to talk about. And then lo and behold, the turn wasn't cycling. This hasn't happened at all over the past couple of episodes. 
right, turn 281, 820 AD. We're no longer suzerain of Jakarta. Really? All right, so I have a nice faith per turn boost here. So I'm probably going to use that to buy some more mosques. If it weren't for electricity, we'd all be watching television by candlelight. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, so nothing needs to be purchased there. What about Jian? Building requires a temple building. All right, so we don't have a temple yet. Put a mosque there. I can purchase lots of different types of units with faith, which is very nice to know. Including tanks. I can use faith to buy tanks. Okay. Um, grants the ability to construct an additional spy. That's quite nice. Offshore oil rigs, also quite nice. Now let's go for computers. We have a boost towards it, so we need to have that built. Wait, what's this? Oh, yes, the neighborhood. We don't need that built just yet, but we do need a university because we need to stay stay ahead in the science game. Good Lord. We are struggling there. Let's go ahead and... What is going on with our gold per turn? It's that negative 16 to Gilgamesh, but even, even then we had a nice surplus and it's just evaporated. We need to pay attention to that. So let's... What would be the best thing to build right now? I'm going to go ahead and build a commercial hub in Agra. And meanwhile, we're going to look for an opportunity to buy a builder there when our income situation turns around. All right. Moscow's production is now much better than it was. We have our ranger up here scouting out the Indian coast. Hey, we've encountered Jerusalem. Very nice. Which is, ironically, Catholic. Oh, this game. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and gain sources here so that spies operate at a higher level. It's going to take, take a couple of turns to do that, but looks like they've got another settler in Uruk as well. I'll have to keep an eye on that. What's going on down here? Oh, yes. Jane Austen. No, you're on happiness. You want nothing but patience. Or give it a more fascinating name. Call it Hope. <laughs> so we finally have Jane Austen's work completed. And now, of course, there's there's no space for F. Scott Fitzgerald. What about for our great musicians? Anyone? Anyone? Nope. Nothing. Next turn. Oh, man. It's 1822 AD. How are we doing tech-wise? We're still ahead of Sumer, but Sumer has definitely taken a jump ahead. I have a feeling that we might leap into the next era and that will set us apart somewhat dramatically. That might happen pretty soon. At least I'm hoping. All right, so no one has a, a, a mission right now as far as trading goes. Tell you what, go ahead and do a trade with Moscow. Let's get another road set up going down to Moscow. And then also, let's hop over here. So here's Marseille. Or as the ancient Romans would have called it. Or the Greeks, Massilia. Russian Caravelle. Our archaeological museum is one turn away from being done in St. Petersburg, which means next turn we're going to train an archaeologist right away. So we can start excavating some of these artifacts. 
I'm really frustrated with the situation with Gilgamesh, though, because it has crippled my income, and I didn't even think it was going to happen. I thought it would just reduce the amount of gold I was getting per turn from him, but it appeared to completely negate the gold per turn that I was getting from him. So, very frustrating. Four great works of art slots if we build the Hermitage. Good to know. Right, we're going to build an archaeologist first, though. Also, just a lot of buildings that we're, we're setting up have additional requirements. Let's go ahead and do a builder in Smolensk. Have additional uh, maintenance requirements, specifically. All right, so this trader is ready to go. I need to send him somewhere where he's going to make money. Like Jakarta. That's a long trade route. Cross-continental trade route. Alright, so... Russian Ranger. Up here. And the Caravel actually is right behind the Ranger at this point. Definitely seems like we're the largest land empire in the game. Without question. We have more territory. And I do wish that I had taken Cobble earlier in the game. It just makes sense to want to take Cobble. It is the atomic era, and with that, to oh yeah, err is human. But to really foul things up, you need a <laughs> you need a computer. Awesome. All right, so now we have jumped ahead of Gilgamesh again, which was expected, and we now I kind of want to do combined arms so that we have access to the to some advanced naval units, but also, um, yeah, I'm gonna go for economics because if we can build Big Ben, that could really help with our economic situation. And we have two envoys here. Let's go ahead and get Amsterdam. All right, so that's that's done. We're getting some additional gold from that. That definitely helped with our de deficit a very little bit. And we're just going to kind of use this ranger to explore wherever we can get a sense for what's going on. Of course, we're going to have access to the satellites before long, if we continue with this series, that is. You guys will have to let me know if you want to see it continue. Another option we have for the channel is I, I could continue it in the distant future. <laughs> you know, I could always do it again. Yeah, I could come back to it at some point once we've gotten some other Civ 6 and other game stuff out of our systems a little bit. Um, so, I mean, I'm not limited to just, like, either not bringing it back in 20 days or bringing it back in 20 days. There's other options aside from that, but I just heard a barbarian encampment pop up. I'm going to guess there's one down here. Yep, there it is. All right, so let's get our cannon in position. Cannon should be all we need, actually. So I'll just let them deal with it. Meanwhile, up here in Lanchi, we have access to some new stuff. Let's go ahead and build a commercial hub, because good lord, we're going to need one. Let's see. It looks like that would be the best place to build it. So there it is. Oh no, I clicked too early. Let's just go there. We're going to use this caribou to uncover some of this coastal fog. There we go. It's 1830 AD. Interesting. All right, so they want to give me 37 gold and 6 gold per turn for 30 turns. In exchange for resources I have tons of copies of. Yes, I'll take it, because I'm hurting economically. All right, we're making 360. All right, we're still giving a bunch to Gilgamesh for 19 more turns. So we need to keep doing what we can to reverse that deficit. That's really going to 
slow us down a little bit. After shifting all boys, you're no longer suzerain of Amsterdam. Who took Amsterdam from us? <sighs> Sumer. All right, so Sumer has has decided to uh, mess around with us in Amsterdam. All right, let's pay this scout a visit. Bye bye. We're gonna stay off the coast with the caravel here and just uncover more of the fog. Meanwhile, I think we have a ranger over here that just needs to hop in the water and go up there, see what's going on in that direction. Uh, skip turn, and next turn. Archaeologist is four turns away in St. Petersburg. We're making a nice 27.8 gold per turn now, despite our negative 16 gold going to Gilgamesh. I wish that was happening for this entire episode, but instead it's kicked in just at the very end here. What can you do? 1832 AD. Quite an impressive. Let's take a look at the strategic view, shall we? Because the strategic view in, in Civ 6 is, is truly pretty. So we can turn on lenses. Actually, let's turn on political so you can really see our territory. You can look at government modes. You can look at political, tourism. I like these map modes because... You and I come by nice road too. or rail, but economists travel on infrastructure. Why, thank you. So I just thanked him for the quote. So yeah, I like this because this this kind of resembles the the map modes in, in Paradox titles, which allow you to just kind of get a quick glimpse at, you know, the surrounding world and very quickly, you know, interpret the, the land through several different lenses. And the political lens in particular really lets you see what your territory is from an overhead view. I wish we could zoom out a little bit more than this. I mean, it doesn't make sense really that we're not able to, but I mean, I guess this is a relatively large continent, so maybe that's what it is. But uh, but yeah, I don't know where that other settler went, oddly enough. Actually, hang on, let me look real quick. Is there an option for strategic view? No, there is not. I feel like there really should be, but there isn't. Okay, so it's turn 288. It's 1834 AD. We've gone seven episodes longer than Russian Sunset in Civilization V. And I do want to hear what your feedback might be on the continuation of this series. If there's definitely a cry, you know, for, for folks that want to see more, I'm not opposed to finishing it. I mean, it, at this point, I was what I was hoping wouldn't happen is that we would get to this point in the series and we were just like, so far ahead of everyone else. So we just jumped a good bit ahead of Sumeria, but they've been giving us a run for their money. I just didn't want to get to episode 20 and feel like I had to continue the series or that people wanted me to continue the series when there really wasn't going to be much to watch. But it still does feel like we're headed for some conflicts and it might be a bit of a close victory if Sumeria continues to make progress. So I'm still on the fence as to whether or not we'll continue this episodes or continue this series after we do 20 episodes and something else for this slot. But we are going to do that now if you're watching this live. Of course, if you're watching this in the backlog... You can just jump in and and watch the next episode because it's available if we decided to do it. But let me know what your thoughts are. I am open to um, thinking about that. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along if you're not already. I upload new episodes in historical and grand strategy type of content every day at noon Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus five for those of you not in the States. And as I've been pointing out, comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next episode.